Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, if you can believe it, oh Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here tonight to talk seeking sister, wife. A lot of shenanigans went down in yeah. Rio de Janeiro, baby. Uh-huh. And we're going to need to get into it. But before we do, we have to warn you, please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast we say a lot of bad words so fair warning we also have stupid takes and so if you're sensitive you might want to find yourself another dumpster baby (laughs) but if you're down to party with a couple of fat raccoons especially her (laughs) welcome to this dumpster (laughs) and if you are down and ready to party be sure to follow us on instagram at reality tv grinch and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv grinch that's where the real party's at Okay. And if you are watching on YouTube, first of all, thank you so much. You look beautiful you today. Too. Please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe. Truly, every little thing you do helps us. It helps us to grow. It helps us to attract more raccoons to the dumpster. Yeah. So thank you in advance for that. Thank you. Now, before we talk about the episode, we have to talk about something that happened in the Sister Wives universe last week, which I saw. Yeah, me bit- too shook Mm -hmm. by what I saw Mm -hmm. and it concerns Mary Brown Mm -hmm. um but before that let's tell them about our rewinds oh yeah a lot of you have messaged us on Instagram and commented and all that we are going to bring back the sister wives recaps and rewinds um we're finishing up with VPR this like I think by the end of May it's going to be done thank god yeah we're going to be done with that and so we'll bring back the sister wives recaps on the reg yes i know a lot of you missed that we took a little bit of a break after garrison's passing so fret not yeah that will come back yes we love doing them in fact that's like our primary reality television show that started this launched this whole podcast so we do want to get back to it speaking of launching something yeah (laughs) i saw on my instagram timeline the mary brown she was sitting on her front stoop in front of her B and B in Parowan, Utah, like that. We have a camera coming up the walkway, getting closer and closer. And right when we reach Mary, she looks up with those weird eyebrows, girl, and smiles, a knowing smile. And I'm like, what's going on? It's frightening me. It is quite scary. Frightened. <laughs> Uncanny Valley. Hashtag worthy up though. Yes. So this was a launching for her motivational business, life coaching business called Worthy Up. And she's been kind of soft launching this yeah. for several months. We knew something was coming. We went to her wi- her website. We did a deep dive. Um, and so I guess she's calling herself a motivational speaker. That's laughable. She's going to have a Facebook group. And if you want to be a member of this Facebook group, you have to pay up to $600 up to join a year. A year. Not yeah. like lifetime. Yeah. A, a year. year. <laughs> and apparently there's going to be like motivational live streams and we're going to have homework to do and you'll get a journal. What? You get a journal, maybe a sweatshirt. Stop. You can wear the up. <laughs> So, again, I have to register my primary complaint here, which is, who the fuck do you think you are, Mary? We've been watching you for so many years. Just two years ago, you were still married, at least in your eyes, to Cody Brown. And you wanted to be married to Cody Brown. Yeah. You were hanging on for dear life. Yeah. And I dare say, if he wanted you right now, you'd be with him, no questions asked, irrespective of his terrible, and I dare say, abusive behavior for real and have you gone to therapy doubt have you seen a psychiatrist doubt did you even get a life coach certification from no. some bum ass mormon mlm <laughs> no so what gives you the authority because somebody who's going to help me heal from my trauma better have some innate authority in yeah. the matter what gives you the authority i don't know it's to really coach people. cringe it's so cringe to me and like we've talked about this on the pods like many many moons ago about how like maybe you have good intentions you want to help people that's cool but <laughs> you're no tony robbins Mm-mm. you're no fucking motivational speaker like you have no qualifications Has she ever done public speaking i, I know they were so. on some sort of weird panel at a college or something <gasps> did she talk no she does fridays with friends okay 
All right. <laughs> That's so her qualification. Virtual only. Getting drunk on Fridays <laughs> with her friend Jen and doing on Instagram live. Look, I mean, I think that her lived experiences and the things that she's learned over the last 12 years, 15 years, and throughout her life, I think they're valuable. Sure. I think the longer somebody lives on the planet and does it even remotely successfully, like, that's important. Yeah. And it's good to share that with other people. But to presume to be an authority, to motivate somebody else, and you're going to be attracting all kinds of people. Yeah. Like, the people who are interested in your show, they're us. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> they're, they're broken. Raccoons. They're broken people. Yeah. <laughs> they have a lot of problems. And they're yeah. going to be attracted to your program. And they're right. going to be thinking, oh, my God, Mary Brown's going to help me get out of my abusive relationship, mm. my terrible marriage, mm. my situation with my health or my kids. What equips you and qualifies you to lead these people on an actual healing journey? Like it makes me mad. I know. It makes me upset. It's really annoying and it's such a grift. It's such an MLM bullshit. And I know the Mormons love that, mm -hmm. but I just, I can't. Like you could do literally anything else. Like at least with Janelle, like Janelle's doing her thing. I think you had said it's like a fitness thing, right? Maybe yeah, it fitness seems, nutrition. It seems focused on fitness and nutrition. And that makes sense. Like, especially for Janelle, even Janelle's still doing her fitness stuff on right. Instagram. So like that makes sense. But like Mary, do like a YouTube channel. Like people mm -hmm. would totally yes. watch all of your shit. You can make a lot of money with ads and yes. stuff like like that and you could do lives for that and make a patreon but like yes. actually talk about real shit or do a fucking tell-all book yes like i don't know why we're beating around the bush why do we have to do hashtag worthy up do you have enough self-worth you didn't have enough to leave cody that i'm part. sorry but it's like hello call on the kettle black well and the other thing that really bothers me beatrice and all the raccoons is the fact that she hasn't taken a strong stance against Cody Brown or Robin Brown. Exactly. This is a man, in my opinion, who has been abusive to his wives and to his children. Who knows what's going on behind closed doors? But from just what we see on television, this man has been verbally abusive to yeah. his family. And you haven't said shit. In fact, you were the last one standing at their side propping them up yeah. like you're a bad actor I don't have faith in your judgment mm -mm. and now you're going to sit up in front of me and tell me you have the secret to my healing and to my happiness you're not happy that's a joke honestly and it's just reminiscent of her stupid retreats the six thousand dollar retreats which she'll probably keep doing but I'm it's sure like, what? I don't know it's really cringy to me I wonder if people are actually going to pay six hundred dollars yes. well like people who are genuinely wanting help from Mary Brown who wants help from Mary Brown there are so many people there are people that go to those retreats and Ugh. pay four to six thousand dollars some of them that don't even get to stay at the b and b they're, they're at the fucking holiday <laughs> in express western. yeah the best western down the street there are people absolutely willing to pay and look go get your bag go get your coins sure, there's just something fundamentally ethically problematic about this yeah and i think it was on her instagram the caption to her launch or maybe it was in a comment I don't know it's all a blur yeah but somebody was talking to her about her trials and tribulations over the last few years and she blames everything on the audience what and on people's callous takes opinions comments and the toxic parasocial relationship that she has with everybody else wow for most of her hardships and I'm like are you kidding me that is dumb I mean, it's also true. It's very toxic. And if you're going to be on reality TV or if you're going to put yourself out there, you're going to have to learn how to deal with it. Yeah. But we're not the source of your problems. We're just observing and commenting. I was going to say, like, we have eyes. We have ears. We can see what's happening on TV. Like, even though it's edited and shit, we can see mm -hmm. how Cody Brown's been treating you. And like a lot of the people in our comments were just people mad at her for not leaving Cody Brown and not being honest about how he treated her and how Robin's a big old bitch. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I get it, but like, don't read the comments. Yeah. You know, if you're going to be in the public eye and you have I mean, been for it, 20 years. It is years. toxic and poisonous. And yes, I'm sure it can do a lot to somebody's mental health. But I mean, at the same time, we aren't the source of your inherent or your innate problem. No. First of all, you're the source of that. And second yeah. of all, you continue to lie. Yeah. Y'all lie a lot. Yeah. You got so pissed off when Christine told the story of Cody burning down or uh, melting down your ring in fucking season one. Right. And you got mad because that lie from so many years ago was outed by somebody else. Like you were never going to tell the truth about that. And no. So you're not, you're, you're not a truth teller. No. I'm, I'm triggered. I know. I'm fucking triggered by <laughs> this. Triggered. And here's the thing. I really, I want 
the best for her. I want her to find a man. Yeah. Go find yourself a man. Yeah, or I want a you to woman. be happy living in your B&B. What? I said, or a woman. <laughs> or a woman. <laughs> go. Jen. Yeah. <laughs> Seeking sister wife. Yeah. Um, go find yourself a partner. Yeah. You know, and do something that you love to do. But this just feels really icky. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Agreed. This week. Yeah. This week. <laughs> we're going to talk about it more. As well, it can evolves. we talk about Facebook, though? Because you were talking beforehand how yes. it's kind of really stupid. It's kind of dying. Like To put your whole platform on Facebook where only boomers and Gen Xers are. <laughs> No offense to y'all if you still like Facebook and stuff, but yeah, I, no have, problem. I haven't had one in like six years and I don't miss it at all. Even Instagram, I'm like, Ugh, yeah, I can't anymore. But I'm like, why only on Facebook? Like, is that what you think the young kids are doing? Or like, No, it's her demographic. You attract I mean, what you are. And but so go on YouTube. she's expecting to attract middle aged women like her who are uh, kind of in the same life okay. situations. YouTube would be way better. Way better. If you ask me. Yeah. And she could make more money. Facebook is pretty lucrative too. Yeah. And like on YouTube, you could have so many things that you could talk about. You can talk about your life in Mormonism, fundamentalist Mormonism. Uh, interior design in the B&B. Like, please fucking redesign that whole thing. Right. I'd love to watch. That would be so much Get better. Get monetized. Yeah. And have a Patreon. Have members. We'd all be watching. We'd these people are so it. dumb. They're so stupid. They don't know how to live life out here in these raccoon <laughs> I streets. Know. I wish they'd listen to I us. Know. I know. I wish too. <sighs> All right, let's get into Seeking Sister Wife. All right. We are on season five, episode 10, entitled Seeking a Deeper Understanding. That requires brains. <laughs> Brain cells. <laughs> capacity. Yeah. These people don't have capacity. No. Oh, my God, Garrick. Oh, my God. With his tears. Listen. And his faraway caveman stare, <laughs> staring at the fire. Og make fire. I know. He's so stupid. He's disgusting to me. He's so He's <laughs> revolting <laughs> to me. He is revolting. Well, let's start with them. Let's okay. just get them out of the way. Rip the band-aid off. All right, off. let's do it. So they're still in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. When my baby looks at me, I go to Rio. Oh. I'm sorry. Every week I have been wanting to sing that. Oh my God, why haven't you been? Well, because that's obnoxious. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear somebody <laughs> singing, but I always think that when you... Talk about Rio. Well, they're in Rio still, and Garrick and Natalia are still really, still devastated that they can't get married. Sure. In the way that they wanted to. It all feels a little producer fakery to me, but whatever. Danielle's super happy because oh, yeah. she's pregnant. Yes. And she's totally lording it over Natalia. Yes. And continues to when they go to the little baby clinic there to go and do Which the was ultrasound. Very bizarre to me. Kind of. Like that you would. Choose to go to an OBGYN in Brazil yeah. when, I mean, I assume you have one in Colorado and you're yeah. going to be returning home in two days. You can just go to your actual doctor, but you want to drag Natalia's sullen ass mm -hmm. all the way down to the Brazilian doctor and yeah. have her witness the baby's heartbeat. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Natalia's got a weird energy because she says in her talking head that she's conflicted she's sad that she can't get married she's also disappointed that she wasn't the one pregnant because apparently her and garrick have been trying maybe he's been fucking raw dog raw dog in it they've just been trying to conceive a baby Ugh. he was trying to inject that sperm into her brain yeah <laughs> <laughs> get in there holy ghost get into the brain Ew. into the dna it's so gross and so she's sad but she also wants to be happy for danielle i guess but she's not no. and she's also pissed seeming a little bit she seems to be angry and yeah. i'm wondering what else is going on in the relationship or in the arrangement that is causing her to be this disgruntled yeah i understand being disappointed but then you make a, a follow-up plan right you make a secondary sort of a, a plan to continue but maybe she's starting to already get the vibe vibe check like we are that garrick's going to bounce yeah garrick's just going to get back to colorado and he's going to start dating all these other people vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the dating apps that you saw with your own own eyes mm -hmm. and maybe she's like well fuck there goes my opportunity yeah i'm never getting to america i fucked him for six weeks straight and i don't even get to go to, to america. look at these wife beaters <laughs> for six weeks straight and those goddamn khaki shorts for six weeks and i can't come to america <laughs> you gotta be kidding me the world is so cruel i know i kind of felt for natalia there and then later on after the ultrasound everybody cries it's such a sweet moment it's a gift from god blah 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 and i'm snoring nobody cares mm -mm. and so then they're back at the airbnb 
and all of Natalia's friends come over. Which was kind of strange. It was very bizarre. So they were like supposed to come over for a wedding celebration. Yeah. But it was a wedding not happening, (laughs) non-celebration, where they just sit around and translate for crying Danielle. Why do these people cry so much? I don't know. Garrick's crying. Danielle's crying. Natalia kind of tears up. Does she? A little bit. She seems cold as a stone. She kind of gets misty and then She seems mad all the time. Yeah. She's kind of hard-faced. But... I don't know. They're just creepy to me. This whole thing was super weird and cringy. I felt bad for all the friends that are just sitting there like, I don't understand a thing that's going on right now. Where's the pastelis? (laughs) I mean, where's the party? We came to celebrate. It's very No, Danielle is taking this opportunity to inject her maudlin bullshit energy into the situation and make it all about her. Yeah. It's super weird because Natalia starts talking about how she's sad that there's no wedding. They prepared so much for it by fucking a lot. And it was a <laughs> lot of effort. Why couldn't we get married? So she's sad. And then she's sad about Danielle being pregnant. But she's like, no, but I'm happy for you guys. And then Natalia kind of confronts Garrick and is like, you know, I'm kind of mad that you weren't comforting me during all of this. And you're kind of blowing me off. Like, I'm sad about this wedding not happening and you're just like you don't give a fuck so i was a little confused about that so she was talking about once the news came in from the bailiff judge or whatever yeah that they can't get married that garrick didn't pay enough attention to her to comfort her and as we watched last week they uh garrick and danielle go for a walk and go see rio de janeiro Mm -hmm. and natalia wants to go upstairs and rest and so she's upset that he didn't tend to her yeah Which I could totally see because he's dead inside and he's a psychopath. Right. And he doesn't care about either of them, actually. No, not at all. But then did you notice Danielle is the first person to start to defend him? Yes. Like, let him defend himself, Danielle. It's super weird. Like, she she goes back to Natalia and she's like, I'm confused because I think that Garrick has been very comforting to you. I've been seeing it. He cares a lot. And his time is divided. So you just have to deal with it, bitch. That's like basically what (laughs) Mm -hmm. she's saying. And then right after that, she also gets into, but Natalia, you don't text me enough. Why don't you talk to me? I want you to be more open to me. Can your friend um, translate that to you? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, so now everybody has to take care of me. And then Garrick's crying into the camera in his interstitial he's saying something like i really want the sisters to get along i'm the happiest when the sisters are happy in their relationship the i'm fuck? like what's happening here it's really gross first of all are you talking about a sexual relationship <laughs> that's what i thought too is that what we're talking about second of all you have to be a part it's not like you exist outside of that relationship right. you are creating the relationship all three of you you have to do stuff to facilitate their relationship their friendship it's not going to just something that they take care of on their own while you go and fuck bitches i know but that's what he wants to do 100 percent. it's totally reminiscent of cody brown like cody being like well the sister wives just have to get along like it's not my job to care about anything and i'm just gonna go over to robin's house and fuck her 24 7 mm-hmm. the wife should just be okay with it yeah and as soon as you start complaining about robin who i'm fucking 24 7 well then you're a bad wife exactly yeah it's the same kind of thing with garrick and he's just so weird he's like barely crying every time he just like gets misty it's like robin brown it's really i saw weird. some wetness under his eyes it was gross Vizine. yeah visine <laughs> tears and danielle was crying and it was really awkward and these yeah. brazilians are like who are these gringos why I don't are know we if they here? say that but who are these whiteies <laughs> just know. crying in here you know making us translate for them yeah super weird. i hope all of the friends got a little bit of a paycheck for being there and having to they sit didn't. there and witness this. tlc doesn't pay the people in other countries well fuck tlc then yeah well Always, <laughs> always fuck eternally TLC. fuck TLC. <laughs> For real. Although we watch all their shows. Of course, because it's trash. Are we going to watch Unexpected? I mean, I was kind of looking at that, Have but I'm like, I ever? would get so mad at those parents. I know, but it's pretty good. It's are you are teen you like mommy. an old teen mom? Yeah. Fan? Me too. I used to love teen mom. You know, they say Janelle's going back to teen mom. No. Yes, because you know, she dumped David. Yeah. Because he's an animal killing, child abusing asshole. Yeah, she doesn't so pick him well finally dumping him for whatever reason so Ugh. i think mtv is inviting her back i hate that bitch low-key though i hate her too i hate all i hate, her I hate, so all, I hate kale much. i hate all of i hate them, them so <laughs> they're all bad but unexpected is kind of like teen mom 2.0 or 3.0 yeah but it's like 14 and 15 year olds and that just makes me irate yeah 
because I'm like, why are these parents? I mean, whatever. Okay. I, I can't. I like, I would get triggered, but I would watch it. I would watch it too. Maybe we should react to I it. I mean, we have such a full schedule, but I mean, I would be interested to checking. I mm. would be interested. Maybe we should. Okay. <laughs> to be determined. Yeah. To be determined. So then after this weird wedding slash non-wedding uh, weird party. party celebration, later the girls and Garrick go out to dinner because it's his birthday. And also it's his last night in Brazil because him and Danielle are going to be flying back home. Mm -hmm. And he's like, it's very bittersweet. I really want to be with Natalia. And it kind of sucks that we have to wait longer or that I have to wait longer to bang her back out uh, because we have to go through this K-1 visa. But, you know, it's going to be a good time. And it's like kind of awkward and weird, but they do mention the k1 90 day mm -hmm. fiance visa yeah and the fact that they said 90 day fiance i'm like is this a plug like are oh you God. gonna be on i know you show? mentioned last week that maybe there'd be like a crossover or something i would love to see <laughs> that though high key i would watch it just for that well but we all know he's not gonna do it we've well, all seen the previews where natalia's like i haven't heard from them it's been weeks i don't know what's going on and we all see him banging some chick from michigan so he's probably not gonna want to bring her he's had his fill of old natalia oh my god yeah. <laughs> yeah probably but it would be so interesting to have like a polygamous couple on 90 day fiance because i don't think we've ever had that before it's always just like but the then we'd have to watch 90 day fiance and those are two hour episodes Listen, i will watch it i will consume that trash for us. okay and i'll just recap it for all of y'all okay because i think that would be interesting but yeah that's it with them it's okay. very boring they end like natalia sad because it's gonna be a long distance relationship blah 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 nobody cares oh one thing i did hear about danielle merrifield was that she changed her ig bio huh can you pull it up really Let quick pull it up so it says official wing woman to my husband mom of three amazing children love is my mission god first then family always learning and growing cringe yeah well and did you notice was it a couple of weeks ago when she had her phone up and she was facetiming garrick she said like my beloved protector that's how he's in her yes phone. my beloved protector husband garrick yes <clears throat> yeah they're cringe. so they're so they're so creepy and she's the worst i mean she's an official sex trafficker for <laughs> her beloved protector Elaine maxwell it is exactly right it's really weird maybe she gets a kick out of it Maybe it's a finish She's getting for something them. out of it. She's got to. Mm -hmm. Something. The box or maybe Garrick's fucking her more. Ew. Then we have the Davis family. And they're kind of, you yeah. know, whatever. But April, Jennifer, and Danielle all go on a date with this chick named Jasmine, who they met on the Tinder or something. Yeah. And they want to basically vet her for Nick. And they go to some weird place where they get drinks and play Jenga. Like Pindustry somewhere like, in Denver? Is that? I don't know. Oh. But they're basically playing Jenga and asking like 20 questions with Jasmine to try and get to know her. Okay, so let's download on jasmine yeah what did we think about her like our fake psychic intuition and predictions because i just got trash bag yeah totally trash bag. <laughs> <laughs> no totally. offense i mean that's terrible I'm just like totally Ooh. i mean i lived in colorado for quite some yeah. time i'm like that's colorado trash bag 100 percent. she's like the girl that i see on my cringe tiktoks on the cringe pages that i watch because <laughs> i love that shit she's totally that girl that's like unironically cringe i mean you're showing up in a neon lime green girl bodycon dress i mean more power to you but I, I forget which interchangeable blonde white <laughs> said that um she has a lot of confidence yeah. and she's okay to be the center of attention uh, that's a problem yeah that's a, that's like a problem. you're coming in to potentially assimilate with these women into this family and you're showing up i mean just from a subconscious level in like the brightest tightest dress you can possibly wear yeah and then you proceed to be so agreeable mm -hmm. on every weird fucking thing they bring up uh-uh honey you just want to be on tv i know a clout raccoon when i see what oh 100 percent. and even danielle and i think april also calls that out for her like that might be a red flag that she is too agreeable but we'll see how it goes we'll let her date nick we'll see how it goes but i don't know and i think the other red flag is that she's never been in polygamy so i'm like how are you gonna do sharon your man mm -hmm. in the boom boom room yeah so this feels pretty manufactured to me i'm having a hard time believing that this is real what were some of the things that they discussed they discussed uh, Nick being able to stay home and yeah. she was like you know most people they want an alpha man somebody <laughs> who goes out and 
takes care of everything, brings it back home. But like I come from a pride of lions <laughs> where the women go out and we do all the dirty work and we bring it back to the man. I'm like, lady, you've seen I this can't. show before. You've Ooh. rehearsed this line and it's stupid and cringe AF. And it, like this is literally like the subject matter of all the cringe stuff that I watch on Instagram and stuff like this wolf pack the prides like it's a weird fad that's going on right now oh, i don't even i'm so checked out oh my god it's like straight up a fad and like some of these people like actually howl like unironically oh, are they furries no no oh, no this is just like their thing like the women like howl and they call their husbands like the alpha the because fuck first world psychological <laughs> tiktok problems <laughs> do we so have cringe. we are fucking crazy it's so cringe and i thought it was interesting that she brings it up like that and all of the girls like april jennifer and danielle all agree to it so i'm like okay so that's your thing that's what you guys do nick's the alpha who stays at home and i guess protects you guys from what I don't know. Well, I don't know. You're out nine to five working, working. so you're not with him most of the time. And What's he protecting all the you chores? from? I don't know, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would hope that if something happened, like Nick would step out and he would go to bat for these women. But he kind of strikes me as like a guy that just lets the women take charge. He doesn't mm -hmm. do shit. He just smokes Because he weed. doesn't have to do shit. No. No, he doesn't do chores either. He's wearing those fancy, strange <laughs> shirts, those metallic I shirts. Know. You think he's doing the dishes and getting out the Dawn dish soap, doing some fucking laundry? Do you think he's mopping with Fabuloso? He is not. No, he's not. And actually, I have to read you his Instagram bio too because okay. it's so cringe. So right. hold on. So his bio says, as a neuroquantum adept... I have mastered the metaprogramming circuit and attained neurogenetic consciousness. I'm not kidding. That's what I Say it again. Say it again. I have to hear it. As a neuroquantum adept. Neuro, brain ball synapses, quantum, multidimensional, adept, like you're a disciple yes. or like you are an expert in something. Yeah. I have mastered the metaprogramming circuit and attained the matrix yeah and attained neurogenetic consciousness so you're neo yeah <laughs> <laughs> so are, we're neo busting out of the matrix he escaped the matrix pretty much yeah okay that's not presumptuous at all no, not it's at not all. Pre spiritually pretentious at all but that's what he's doing at home okay he's breaking out Got of it. the matrix because he's so intelligent and his brain is so amazing that's what he's doing at home while he's smoking weed all day and jacking off. Got it. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> I just That's had to read great. that. That's I found fantastic. That the other day. That's on his personal Instagram. It's non-ironic. No. Wow. It's dead ass serious. And his Instagram is private. So he won't allow anybody to follow it because it's his personal page. Mm -hmm. And then the Davis family has their own like shared one. But yeah. <laughs> cringe and then he makes like youtube videos and stuff where he talks about like consciousness oh does he shut yes. your face you should have been telling me about that i want to watch I that shit yeah i found it the other night and i'm like what the fuck i'm an actual quantum adept <laughs> i'll be able to spot another quantum <laughs> adept honey it's so send me the link i want to see i will if he's like authentic like maybe he's no okay. no he's not he's <laughs> well, just talking see. out his ass i'll watch the videos yes yeah. okay yes and then you'll report back. I will. So then after their weird date, the girls and their date, Jasmine leaves to go to work and April, Danielle and Jennifer kind of deliberate. And they're like, what'd you think? And they all like her. They think that she'd be a good fit for Nick. Why? She's so scummy. Sorry. I'm know. so judgy. I apologize. It's my third eye. I see things. I know. It's really so bad. Scummy. She's so trashy. So you got an 11 year old son. You're just willing to be a part of this family all yeah. of a sudden. Uh -huh. You got nowhere. To, you're homeless. Yeah. <laughs> You're a homosexual. <laughs> yes. Okay. 100%. And so then they go home and they tell Nick all about her because I guess Nick is like the relationships between the women is the most important. So sure. I let them take charge and find the women for me because I can't even do that myself. Right. He's got those big eyes. He's learning about Jasmine. He's looking at those pictures from that very high <laughs> angle of all four girls. He's getting I excited. Know. He's got hungry eyes yes. he's excited about jasmine honey totally he's like i like what i see Ooh. Ew. okay Cringe. get in a hot tub make some soup uh, oh god Ew. make some soup it's so embarrassing so all the girls are like talking her up like oh my god she's so amazing you'll love her and then nick's like 
well, should we, no, I think it was Jen who's like, should we all go on a group date together or should it just be Nick and Jasmine? And they ask like Danielle and Danielle's like, no, I think you guys can have a private date. That's totally cool. Danielle's being very agreeable for just two episodes ago, moving out and not being okay with him dating. So I'm a little sussed out by that. Even April sussed out by that. Nick is too. Nick's worried about her and how she feels. But ultimately, he's like, yeah, I'm going to go on a date with her. Mm-hmm. And we see in the preview that we do. date. We'll we talk about it. We see in the preview. Well, that was embarrassing. And then last but not least, we have the Shabooties. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> they were kind of crazy this episode. They did. They I was actually happy about it. Got into it with Miss Jamila, who, cool. by the way, I stand. I she's stand based. her 100%. I love Jamila. Like, she's a little bit hard edged. Yeah. She has her own opinions mm-hmm. about things, but she's not afraid to put up a boundary nope. and get in your face. Miss Jamila took off her jacket thing. I. No. Her Sasquatch jacket thing. <laughs> she was ready to fight and throw hands. She was. I was happy about that. So Naeem and Nyla and their friend Johari. Johari. Yeah. Yeah. They all go to lunch with Jamila. Right. So we have to just stop right there. Yeah. Because why are they doing this to poor Jamila? I know. Like, why are they setting up all of these scenes where they're having Jamila come over for this or that and like springing it on her that they're making these choices? They already know Miss Jamila doesn't like this. She yeah. She doesn't want this. And if you want to do it, I don't want to be part of your life. And now you're going to drag me out to lunch with some Jahari lady who's perfectly lovely, actually. Totally, Way yeah. more lovely than Nyla and Naeem in terms of how she acts. Yeah. And you're going to spring some more shit on Jamila why for television are they making tv I mean I kind of thought that I'm like maybe they're just wanting clout and want to be entertaining but I keep getting the vibe that they want her approval and they're trying to manipulate her into approving which she's been saying over and over this again the way to do it that she doesn't want to do it she doesn't want to approve of it so I don't know it's very weird and why are you bringing Johari, who's a lovely person. But she's not... Is she a polygamous or is no, she a polyamorous? she's Isn't polyamorous. There, aren't those different things? Yeah, she even says, she's like, my version of polygamy that I practice is polyamory. So I guess polygamy is now the umbrella term and yeah. then everything else We need to under. systemize this. We need to figure out how everything works and what the umbrella thing is. Is it polygamy and then polyamory, polyandry, blah, blah, polygyny, all of the things? I don't It's know. just men fucking lots of women. Yeah. And women suffering for Jesus. I guess guess but with johari's situation correct i mean it seems like everybody benefits because she dates the man and the woman well, she she's calls, bisexual yeah and she calls them my couple they're yeah. my people so that's cool you I know you do it. you that's mm-hmm. fine and i liked her perspective she's very respectful yes she's very level-headed yes. she's like i don't give a shit if you don't accept it very deferential to the elder at the table yes. she's not here to like get all nuts and start popping off or anything she's just like hi miss jamila very nice to meet you I totally understand you. My mother feels the same way as you do. So I get it. And she does try to open the subject matter and kind of talk about her experience. But unfortunately, Jamila doesn't give a shit. (laughs) You seem lovely, Jahari, but like, I don't fucking care. Like you, you are blindsiding me. This is an ambush. Yes, it is. And this is like the second time Nyla and Neem have done this to Jamila. They did this last time when they were like, telling her yeah so we're polygamous and we're gonna be dating other women and jamila's like the fuck i don't care I don't this is the third it. time like the first we ever met naeem and yeah. Nyla, they were talking to jamila and then they had the mother over again and now this is the third time yes why are you trying to get a rise out of this woman who's being very clear like i understand her very clearly and what she needs and wants from you and if you can't give it then fucking go no contact like bye why are you dragging her into this to trigger her it's super weird i wonder if it's nyla mainly wanting the approval of her because it's her mother-in-law like naeem wants his mom's approval but i don't think he really gives a fit he's gonna do I whatever think he, he wants does to do. give a shit because nyla even says i don't care to the camera she's like i don't care about her then at why all are you doing but it? if he wants to have a relationship with her you know separate from the situation that we got going on i've been okay with that but now there's a line in the sand now we have a problem Problem. And if you, it sounds to me that like Nyla is going to have a problem with Naeem if Naeem continues to try and incorporate his mom into their situation because at the table, Jamila brings up her kids. Yes. So initially, Jamila's uh, objection with polygamy was around what? Like germs and stuff. That's right. It was icky. She's like, it's ew, it's gross. Right. But now she's kind of moving the goalposts. And now she's like, well, it's about my granddaughter. Yeah. 
who is going to have to be in the same house with this. And Fair what point. about her? Like, are you guys preparing her? She's not even asking these questions. She's no. already judging it for being fucking bullshit. And yeah. She's like, I'm worried about the 14 year old girl in the house. Yeah. And th- this triggers Nyla. Yeah, because Nyla and Naeem are like, well, she's 14 and she can tell us if she's uncomfortable with it, which I'm just like, she's still a child. Though. She is still a child. And you guys are still going to do it even if she's uncomfortable with mm-hmm. it. So, I mean, and Jamila's that's what Jamila's problem is. Yep. And I totally think that's valid. But then Naeem and Nyla get really pissed off because Jamila's acting like she's got this really good relationship with their granddaughter, which according to Naeem and Nyla, she doesn't have a relationship with her. So they think that all of Jamila's concerns are invalid, which I think is really weird. I'm Mm -hmm. like, seems like Jamila's very involved in your family. So why wouldn't she have a relationship with your granddaughter? Yeah, it was weird. It seemed like Nyla was trying to out Jamila as kind of like being a bad grandma. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter why Jamila doesn't like it. It doesn't matter why Jamila doesn't want it. Yeah. She doesn't like it and she doesn't want it. So leave her alone. Stop trying to force the issue. And like bringing along this very lovely, but like this person that she doesn't really want to sit down and talk with. She doesn't want to hear about her bisexual life because you notice as soon as Nyla mentions that Jahari is bisexual, Jamila just stops what she was saying. And she's Mm. like, oh, so it's like they're trying to provoke her. Yes. They're trying to get a bad reaction out of her. Yep. For TV or for shits and giggles and i'm like why do you even care like usually when you're older like that you're set in your fucking ways like there's no need to change their mind let them believe what they want to believe yeah if she doesn't approve of your nasty lifestyle she doesn't approve of your (laughs) nasty (laughs) lifestyle you know what i mean it's like who cares at that point and even jahari says that after everything she's just like can't you just have a separate relationship with your mom and then do your polygamy like why does it matter Mm -hmm. you can separate it it's fine yes there's a lot of people that have to do that it's okay if people don't accept your lifestyle that's fine but naeem and nyla don't want to hear about it well and nyla is the one who's kind of escalating at the table and she did say something disrespectful to miss jamila and i don't remember exactly what it was but when she said it i heard it i was like oh shouldn't be saying that to your elders and jamila heard it immediately and she's like no well now you're getting disrespectful now we're going to have a different kind of problem not just about a conversation about lifestyles and our disagreements now you're going to bring disrespect and my son is sitting here letting you do it and she's Mm -hmm. like i'm out so she starts getting her stuff on she's putting on her sasquatch sweater (laughs) and jamila says it under her breath she's like if i wasn't on tv right now or at this restaurant i'd beat your ass that's literally what she said and nyla was like what you think gonna happen if you do and i'm like so you're gonna threaten an elder well i mean it seems like miss jamila's down because she starts taking her sasquatch (laughs) sweater off immediately she's like okay here we go let's do this like you can tell Jamila's old school, old school granny in the building. Mm -hmm. And Nyla's provoking her. She's provoking someone that I think she knew was going to have a bad reaction and i'm like why i don't i don't know why you're doing this like there's way more interesting things we can talk about and feature in your story than you antagonizing this older woman i'm not down with that i wondered if it was like produced like i wonder if the family did this on purpose just for clout and for entertainment because we talked i think it was last week about the possibility of nyla and naeem being squatters and clout goblins and stuff like that so maybe it was all produced It was still entertaining, though. It was entertaining. And I think that there may be something to that, because if they are having financial problems and they've landed this television show, you know, they might not be below dragging Jamila in and antagonizing her and terrorizing her with their lifestyles that they can make good TV and maybe get another season so they could continue to get a paycheck because they owe money to the landlords allegedly. (laughs) I don't know, but that's the rumor. They got to get Naeem's teeth fixed. Yes, (laughs) I mean, please. (laughs) But yikes. Yeah. But yeah, this was all crazy. And then Jamila ends up leaving and it's super fucking awkward. Poor Jahari's like, what the fuck did I just witness? She's never met these people in person. No. This is the first time they've only ever spoken virtually, which is another thing I'm clocking with the Shibutis because right. they don't seem to have actual in real life friends that they grew up with, that yep. they hang out with. It's all people that are in these weird communities that are they're meeting in apps and online. I'm like, okay. Kind of weird. It is a little strange. And Jahari, I thought, like handled herself very, very well. And she's like, stop it. We're queens. We don't do this. We don't yes. act like this in public. Please stop it. 
But Nyla wasn't really hearing any of that. No, she wasn't. And I actually really liked Johari. I thought she was very cool. And I thought it was interesting that she's Nyla's friend. Like Nyla was the one that talked to her. Here comes the gay conspiracy. And I'm just like, (laughs) I don't know. Well, I don't know if it's like a gay conspiracy or if it's like maybe Nyla and Naeem are polyamorous. Because I'm Mm. like, why are you talking to a polyamorous I wondered that as well. Because she has nothing to do with polygamy. It's like a totally different thing i know Jahari's like trying to find commonalities with it but i'm like mm, it's pretty different yeah i think so as well so it seems like they're on all kinds of different apps mm. not just spiritual polygamist apps mm. which is interesting but i thought Jahari was like all of us yeah when she was leaving the table and she's like um let me just get this drink though this she is a full ass drink i'm gonna drink it. i'm just like that is me that is 100 percent me i'm not gonna let a nice fruity drink go to waste. I mean, yeah. So she drank it. I, I like, thought that yes, was great. Get it. And there was also one little thing that I caught Nyla saying in the middle, like before everything blew up. Nyla told Jamila that she wants to have everybody sleep in the same bed. Like the Davis family. <gasps> that's right. And Jamila was like, well, don't do that if I come spend the night because that's nasty. Mm-hmm. And I think that was when things started getting really escalated. And Nyla was like, why the fuck do you care? Whatever. And then she starts saying, disrespectful because you're making it my business by inviting me here but i had forgotten that because she does not want to be apart from naeem for even one night and so she's going to require whatever woman they bring back into the house first of all to live in the house which is i guess Mm non-traditional in terms of the quran but also to share the same bed which is getting it is wiggling toward a gay conspiracy if you ask me it's feeling a little bisexual polyamorous i'm like maybe you're poly but you're hiding behind the religion because you're ashamed but i'm like just be honest yeah just be honest well a lot of these religions don't really have any space for lgbtqia that's true all of all of the people in the queer community yeah don't really have representation or purpose in place in orthodox religion or basic religion yeah. so maybe she is muslim and she doesn't feel comfortable to be who she truly feels herself mm-hmm. to be. And so she's concocting this polygamous dream so that Maybe. she can eat a box. Eat the box. Eat a box. Play with some titties. Yeah. I mean, hey, girl, whatever. It's just a theory. Don't come at me, bro. I mean, she said she wants them to sleep in the same bed or the same room. Jahari's a polyamorist and a bisexual that she's been talking to. It's just breadcrumbs. I'm just following them. We're just calling it as we seize it that's right so it was very interesting i thought the fight was very crazy i loved that and then it looks like in the preview for next week uh jahari and naeem and nyla all kind of talk about the fight and they talk about having to draw hard lines and be like okay this is just how jamila is and i'm like yeah i've been knowing that since the beginning of this whole season stupid she told you with her own words out of her mouth yeah she's very clear duh and then we also have the Ryans going on another date with Yari. Oh my Yari. god, fucking weird ass oh Becky. Did god. you guys kiss? And uh, Justin's not happy that she brought that up. Because she's a weirdo. Yeah. And she doesn't know how to hide her weirdo. I know. She's such a creeper. She's probably wanting to mm-hmm. be with those ladies too. I don't know. I'm just saying. And then Nick goes on a horse-drawn carriage ride date with Jasmine that his other three wives paid for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In a weird right. suit. And he's like totally flirting with Jasmine. Jasmine's like, he's so easy on the eyes. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, are we show me where the show person? me on the doll where he's easy on the <laughs> eyes? I don't see it. The fuck? What are you talking about? And Nick tells her, I, I don't want your body if I can't have your mind. And Jasmine's like, that's so sexy. Like, you, that's no problem at all. <laughs> You've already got my mind, Nick. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, it's so embarrassing. Is this what we've been reduced to on reality television? Yes, yes it is. It is. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. I wonder if he fucks on the first date, like Garrick Merrifield. God. I wonder. Wear a condom. Yes. Because I think Danielle asks after the date and everything, like, did you guys kiss? Did you guys fuck? And I wonder if he did. Probably. Mm -hmm. because he's a player i wouldn't put it past him yeah 
But I think we might be wrapping up this season. I mean, we're on episode 10, so we might have a few more episodes to two go. To, two to four, probably. Yeah. And you were saying they typically do reunions or well, no? Well, I think they have in the past. It's been so long, I have to remember. Okay. But I don't know. I mean, nobody's talked about a reunion this season. That would be so awesome. Yeah, if they asked actual questions yeah. that the viewers want answers to. Right. Yeah, but I'll be watching. Oh, most yeah. definitely. Do you think they're going to bring back you, me, and my ex? Oh, my God. I hope so. I, I really enjoyed that. That was so good. Yeah, I was surprised how much I liked that. That was really messy. Mm -hmm. I really liked that. I hope they bring yeah, that back. Yeah. That would be fun. We'll definitely continue with that. All yeah. right. Any final thoughts about any of these perverted degenerates before we leave? <laughs> these people are weird, man. Yeah. But I love it. Yeah. That's my thought. Okay. Same same thought as me. Is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we go, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, be sure to leave us a glowing five-star review five. on your favorite podcast platform. <laughs> we read them all and it really helps us grow the pod. So thank you so much. It also helps us grow our inner worthy of. <laughs> So thank you. Up. We will be back later this week to talk about the season finale of VPR. Hopefully Finally. we won't have to snore through it. <laughs> and we'll also be getting into the valley, which we yes. are loving. That and is so good. Until then, please don't forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.